Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Marina and today I'm going to talk to you about passing GMAT. Recently I scored 700 out of 800 on GMAT, which is a pretty decent score and it got me into top 5 American universities, two of them gave me full uh, financial aid and it took me only two months to prepare and if you have GMAT coming, if you have to take it in a few months, uh, I think this video will be really useful because I'm going to share methods and materials that I've used. Also, if you need to take TOEFL, I filmed a lot of videos about passing TOEFL. I scored 117 out of 120 on TOEFL and I will leave the links below so you could also watch those videos. But let's continue to GMAT. The first thing I did, I found out the score that I needed to get. All of the universities that I've chosen required something around 6 680, 690, they wouldn't really give you the minimum score, they would just give you the average of the previous class. Uh, so I just realized the minimum I should get is 650 and I aimed for more, of course. And the first thing I did, I downloaded a book called GMAT Official Guide. It's updated every year and I will leave a link below for the newest version so you can download it. So what I should tell about this book, the first thing, you don't have to read it. Actually, I started reading it from page one. I thought it would be very useful and I will know all the things about GMAT, but actually, no. The theory there, you know everything. They talk about what is a positive number, what is a negative number, what is a, what fraction means. This is something you wouldn't want to waste your time on, especially if you have two months like I did, because I only found out that I would apply for universities in October and my first deadline was in January, so it was all pretty hectic. So what I did, I took practice tests there. They have something, not like a real GMAT, they have a sort of assessment test and it, took, uh, it told me exactly which parts are the worst for me. It has quantitative, analytical writing, integrated reasoning and verbal. And once I took it, I realized quantitative was the worst part for me. So the thing I did, uh, so the next day, I just opened the quantitative part and they have like 200 different exercises for quantitative part and they actually replicate the tasks you would get in GMAT. So I started with the first one and first 40 tasks look pretty easy. So I didn't experience any difficulties. But then started with the 40th, I realized I don't really know some theory. And this is when I actually got back to the chapters in the book that told me what every you know, digit means uh, in a number or you know, some basic things I've forgotten. So this is the only time when I use the theory in that book. Also, I started measuring my time from the task one. So as you know, GMAT would allow you around two minutes to pass every task. Um, and I tried to limit myself. It didn't mean that when two minutes passed, I just stopped. No, I just realized and marked in my head that, hey, this took a little while longer than I expected. And I just continued doing the task and I made sure I came to the right answer with my brain. So that was really important because it's really important that you can handle all the tasks on GMAT. The second thing I did, well, I read the rules about GMAT, like some basic things you need to know and the most important thing you need to know is that you can't use a calculator. I'm gonna write everything down for you so it's visual and you see everything. Now calculator exclamation mark because um, actually my calculating skills got a little worse because we left school and then at the university they would allow us to use calculator and I actually forgot how you can multiply using your paper and your pen so I had to remember all of that and when I did all the practice tasks uh, I only used my pen and paper so no calculator and also uh, when you're preparing I advise you to all, do all the calcul calculations in your mind especially when you're in a shop or like some something random is happening and you have to calculate things don't use your calculator when you're preparing for GMAT. This is actually good for the rest of your life because it really helps your brain um, to stay vibrant. The third thing I did, and I think it was one of the best things that happened to me during GMAT preparation, I found out about Economist GMAT. 
Uh, Economist is a magazine that writes about things that are happening in the world and they also develop their own course uh, that will help you to prepare for GMAT. But the thing is, it's very expensive. It costs around $800. So what I did, I just took a free trial. It lasted seven days and during seven days I was able to um, to pass 25% of the whole Economist GMAT thing and it was so useful because during this 25% I've learned a lot of things. They would also give you a free consultation, a free um, GMAT simulation test and all, all of the tricks, like all of the tricks I've used in GMAT, uh, they, they came from Economist GMAT and I would actually record a separate video on the tricks that I've used so please subscribe to my channel and make sure you don't miss this video because um, I've used the methods that helped me reduce the time that I took to handle one task like two times or three times. Um, but yeah, I used Economist GMAT for both verbal and quantitative part. Uh, the trial period stops once you reach 25% of the course, but I think those first 25% are the best because, you know, they want to sell you the course, so <laughs> they're trying to uh, make it maximally concentrated with great things you can use on GMAT. Um, so yeah, do it. They, have, they also have a mobile app, so just download it to your phone. The fourth thing I did, um, I just piled my iPhone with all the different apps that there were for GMAT and I'll tell you about the best. So the best one was prep for GMAT. Do you see it? I hope you see it. <laughs> so prep for GMAT. Um, this app was the best in terms of verbal part uh, because um, there was the sentence correction part in GMAT and when I took the practice test I realized I'm so bad at sentence correction. I scored like, I don't know, 10%. Uh, but after using this prep for GMAT I scored 100% out of 100% which is great uh, because you can use it while you're waiting in the traffic jam or waiting for your appointment the doctors and it's always with you. You don't need anything. You, you just have your questions and you have uh, right and wrong answers and then you get explanation why you chose wrong or why you chose right. So this is a very good thing for verbal part. I also used it for quantitative part but because um, I did a lot of quantitative tasks from GMAT official guide it wasn't that effective. Okay, thing number five. You have to figure out how much time you're gonna spend on GMAT preparation. For me, as I said, I only had two full months. Uh, three weeks of those I spent on vacation in Miami, which wasn't the you know, best decision to prepare for GMAT. It was really tough and really difficult to make yourself um, you know, leave the beach and go home and practice, but still I did it. And I think the minimum time that you have to dedicate to GMAT is one, two hours per day plus I would say 10 hours during the weekend, so so 5 hours on Saturday, 5 hours on Sunday, sounds legit. And yeah, so you have to practice every day really. And um, I increased the time that I've used for preparation closer to the exam. So one week before the exam I took vacation, I took days off at work and I spent eight hours a day preparing for GMAT. But this is crucial when there's just a week left till GMAT. Thing number six, resource number six. I guess you already know it guys because I think this is the best forum ever. GMATclub.com so I will tell you the cases when I used it. First, um, when I came to the test that I didn't get and GMAT official guide the book, it really gives you this weird answers like let's remember the formula of a triangle inserted into a rectangular something. And I was like, why would I know this formula? And GMAT club gives you, um, gives you answers that other students came up with and they are really they're easier than GMAT official guidebook. So I used GMAT Club for difficult tasks. The second thing I used it for is essay. An essay is um, a part of the exam that you have to spend the least time on because um, as you know GMAT consists of four parts and essays, uh, essay is a part that doesn't 
um, go towards your final score. Like it doesn't affect if you score 700, 800, uh, they would just mark how much you scored in the exam. Like for me, it was five out of six and I only took two hours to prepare for the essay. And I took all the templates on GMAT Club and I think I'm going to make a separate video about templates. So again, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, it's going to be a separate video on the templates that you have to use for GMAT essays. I just learned them and I also wrote them down uh, during the, uh, this break at the beginning of the test when you have around 15 minutes to read the rules of the test. Um, I actually read them before because they, they can be found anywhere and I used that time to write down the template for my essay because when I started writing it I had everything already on the paper so I just had to insert you know something relevant to the text that they gave me so the template is really useful and subscribe to my channel I'm gonna make a separate video about it and make sure to use GMAT Club um, to you know check out your university and uh, to check out things that people write about your university so very very good website seventh thing uh, this is thing that I also did on GMAT and something you need to to rain in advance. Um, I wrote this on the draft paper that they gave me. A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, many, many times. E. Uh, because I use this for crossing out wrong answers and it makes the thinking really easier when you know that this is not C, this is not B, this is not A, and you just have to decide between D and E and visually it's easier so do that with a template and i think the last the eighth thing whoa <laughs> i wanted to tell you is about uh practice tests so i took four practice tests and you know they are so 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 difficult uh they're psychologically difficult because you have to sit down for like three hours and you have to take that test and especially on the first test I got 640, on the second test I got 670, on the third test I got 700 and I was so excited but then I took another practice test and I scored 650 so don't take them too many times um, but as I said like because you're taking them at home you're not really concentrated so I scored, I actually scored more than I scored on my practice tests um, so the average that I scored in the practice test would be like 680, but I ended up scoring 700. So just make sure you do them and make sure you don't do them three days before the exam because your brain would be so exhausted, you wouldn't be able to concentrate on the exam at all. So I'd say, um, I'd say take three practice tests. Yeah, take three practice tests and stop taking them three days prior to, that, to exam. And the last thing you have to do now is you know what? Like this video, <laughs> subscribe to my channel and also follow me on Instagram. It's Lingua Marina. Uh, you'll see nice pictures of me traveling there. <laughs> so I already got my work visa for the United States. And if you guys also pass in GMAT to get into American universities, please write a comment about which universities you hope to get to and share your experience of uh, GMAT preparation because many other guys who are studying for GMAT will be reading comments and uh, your advice would be really useful. Thank you so much guys for watching this video up to the very end. Thanks you for, uh, thank you for subscribing to my channel and liking my videos and I hope to see you in the next videos which will be also about GMAT. So see you soon. Bye bye.